Good morning and welcome to Lakewood on this first Sunday after Christmas. I hope that your Christmas holiday was blessed, that it was meaningful, and uh, I, I guess I'm hoping that it wasn't too disappointing. I know for some of you, you were worried it might not be the same. The flowers are given to the glory of God this morning by Sharon Swanson in memory of Bill Swanson and also Russell Lapp's birthday. We thank Sharon for sharing these flowers. Would you please join me, join me now as we do our call to worship? There was no room for him in the inn. We're booked solid, said the innkeeper. God was ready to give the world a Messiah. But the world wasn't ready for a savior. So the Lamb of God was born in a lambing stall. The shepherds worshipped him there. Let us worship him here and now. Let us pray. O loving God, we welcome you and invite you to be present in our worship. Yes, we were not ready to welcome your Son into our world on that night in Bethlehem so long ago, but today on this side of Bethlehem, the cross and the empty tomb, we are more than ready to listen to your voice to be obedient to your Son, and to be empowered by your Spirit. Thank you for your triune presence today, made possible because you came to live among us. Amen. This morning, our service will look a little different. We will be reading a number of different uh, scripture passages, followed by singing of some Christmas carols. This is a traditional service of carols and lessons, and I'm following the form that is presented to us in our United Methodist Book of Worship. So please join with me now in singing our first carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Today we have a reading from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15, and verses 17 to 19. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you have, you will eat food from it and all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me.
from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders. Elizabeth's pregnancy, 
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Good morning, boys and girls. Thanks for joining me for our time with the pastor um, in the children's sermon. Hey, if you got any new toys or games for Christmas, would you go get them now? Maybe your mom or dad or grandmom would pause the video while you go get them and uh, bring it back. Well, thanks for coming back. You know, when God made Adam and Eve, God placed them in the garden, and he put them in charge of taking care of the earth. Uh, they named the animals, they named all the plants, and they began to work the land, to, to grow crops, and they worked. But you know what? God also gave them Sunday, the Sabbath day, to rest. And there's something about the way we're made that we as human beings like to play. We like to laugh. We like to have fun. And ever since that experience in the garden, women and men have enjoyed not only our work, but also our play. God gave us the ability to make games and invent toys and to help us enjoy ourselves. Now, the tradition of giving gifts for children began with the Magi, the wise men from the East, who brought special gifts for the baby Jesus. So today, I want you to take your new toy, your new game, and hold it. Do you have one? And let's remember the one who made us and gave us hearts that like to laugh and play to share and to grow as we play. And I'd like to offer a blessing for that toy that you're holding right now. Bless our toys, O oh Lord. Help us be truly grateful for the time you give us to play. Help all of our play to be holy play. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. 
And there were shepherds living out on, in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Before I pray, I would like to um, lift up a number of concerns that have come to my attention this past week. I bid your prayers for Miles Kofsky. Miles was recently in the hospital. He was actually pretty seriously ill, but he is now home recovering, although he is tired. Lord, hear our prayers. 
I bid your family or your prayers for the family of Kurt Craze uh, as they mourn the loss of Rupert Shoemaker. Uh, we prayed for him last week and sadly he passed away due to complications from the COVID-19 virus. For his family, Lord, hear our prayers. I bid your prayers for Gail Cook. This is Karen Proper's sister. Uh, she is currently in a coma in the hospital and Karen is rightfully worried and troubled that she can't visit her sister. Prayers for Gail. Lord, hear our prayers. Alice Volentine asks for prayer for her granddaughter, Jessica. She's being induced on Thursday after a very difficult pregnancy. Uh, we pray for Jessica and this new baby coming into the world. Lord, hear our prayers. Alice also asks us to pray for her good friend, Pat Lopez. Uh, Pat's son, Arthur, passed away in his sleep. And uh, our prayers and our sympathy go out to Pat. Lord, hear our prayers. Patty Lasher rejoices, so this comes under the category of a joy, uh, her sister Connie has recovered significantly from the COVID virus. She is now back home and doing well, and we rejoice. Lord, hear our prayers. And this week, we want to wish the following Lakewood members a very happy birthday. Roger Pike, Jason Scalise, Barb Girardi, and Kathy Smith. If we forgot anyone, please let us know. And now if you have any silent requests, would you bring them before the Lord and we will unite our hearts with your prayers. The form of prayer that I offer this morning is known as a bidding prayer. And I will offer a sentence and then pause while you offer your own prayer. I bid your prayers for those who live on the streets, who sleep in shelters or on the couches of their friends, and whose next meal will probably come from a soup kitchen. I bid your prayers for the young women and men of the armed forces who will not be home with their families this Christmas for their safety and their well-being. I bid your prayers for peace on earth and goodwill to all for an end to the bitter divisions, prejudice, and hatred, and for an end to violence anywhere. I bid your prayers for those who spent Christmas in jail or in a hospital, rehab center, or nursing home, and for those who live alone and had no one to be with. I bid your prayers for the poor of our land, who watch with pain the lavish celebrations of those who have more than enough and had to tell their children that Santa couldn't come to their house. I bid your prayers for those who have lost loved ones just prior to or perhaps during this Christmas season and for whom this time of year is most memorable as well as painful. I bid your prayers for those who will exchange gifts, but who will not experience the spiritual meaning of this most holy event. And now as Jesus taught, I bid you pray with me, the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of the king Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and I have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all people might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank all of our readers this morning for participating in our service as we have retold the Christmas story by reading the scriptures. And I pray that by hearing these all at one time, uh, the Christmas story takes on a special meaning for you this year. Let us pray. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. And now will you please join with me as we sing our doxology, giving thanks and praise to God for all our many blessings. Almighty God, you gave us your love and the gift of Jesus. 
and you call us to share this love in the gift of ourselves, in the gift to those in need of our time, our skills, and our wealth. And so we offer our money now as one token of the giving of ourselves. Bless these gifts of love, even as we praise you for the gift of love in Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again at Lakewood. It has been an honor to share this time with you. Receive the blessing. May the Christ who by his birth gathered us all into divine fellowship fill you with the sweetness of peace and goodwill and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Amen.